Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to test and diagnose idle air control actuator, which is normally installed on the throttle body if you have a cable control throttle body. So uh, this actuator is responsible to bypass the air when throttle body is closed. So uh, it means your engine is getting the air from uh, this actuator. And if this actuator is not working properly, your engine is not gonna get enough air at idle that's why your engine may stall if this one is faulty so in this video i'm going to show you how to test and diagnose this actuator on the car and how to remove and test it off the engine all right let's read the file codes with the scan tool Read fault codes. Okay, so as you see, I have a P1507 idle speed control actuator circuit to low. So this is the fault code. Let's have a look at the wind diagram. Then we start troubleshooting the idle speed actuator step by step. So this is a wind diagram, and this part is idle speed control actuator. So as you see, there are three pins, number one, two, and three on the actuator. So what are these uh, three wires? Number two is actually coming from the engine fuse box. If you chase the number two, it goes from this wire to reach to the fuse box and is getting the battery positive from this fuse. For checking the battery positive here, when ignition switch is on, you should have battery positive right here at pin number two. Okay, this, so this is what we have to check on the car. The other two pins, number one and three, these two are connected to ECM. So this is your ECM. And as you see, number one is the control line for opening the actuator. And number three is control line for closing the actuator. Okay. So it's going to be like this when ECM wants to open the actuator at idle when a throttle body is closed ECM will provide the ground from here and the actuator will open to bypass the air and for closing it provides the ground on this pin so what you can check on the wiring you can check the battery positive right here and for these two on the wiring you can check uh, the continuity at these two ends between the actuator and ECM for opening and of course between pin number 3 and uh, 78 between the actuator and ECM as well just to make sure these two wires are not open and you can do that with the uh, multimeter so right now we can check the voltage supply on idle air control valve so this is a connector I'm gonna remove the connector on your multimeter select voltage black lead on a good ground so as you remember the middle pin was for power supply i used this pin and then i measured the voltage ignition switch must be on all right as you see i'm getting the battery voltage it means the voltage supply is provided on this pin properly and i don't have any problem in this case if you are not getting the battery voltage you need to chase the wiring back of course you need to check the connector itself wiring behind the connector and you can just go back uh, to find what is the problem you may have an open circuit or a, a broken fuse but as i said uh, that fuse is not specifically for idle air control valve if that fuse is broken you may have other problems on other systems or uh, maybe no starting as well so for other two wires which are for opening and closing the idler control valve you can check the pins visually right now or you can just check the continuity between each one of them and the engine control module to make sure they are not open as well so let's remove the idler control valve to see how we can test it with the multimeter and how we can actuate it All right, this is my idler control valve. So I'm going to check the valve with multimeter and I'm going to actuate it as well, just to make sure the valve is working properly as well. 
So for the actuator itself, we can check the internal resistance and we can activate the actuator itself. There are two coils inside the actuator. One is the opening coil, which is connected between pin number two and one. And the other one is the closing coil, which is connected between pin number two and three. So basically, if you are checking the resistance between one and two, between these two pins, you are checking the opening coil. And if you are checking the resistance between number two and three, you are checking the closing coil. Select the resistance on multimeter. The middle one is number two, which is battery positive. So I check the resistance between these two pins. This one is opening coil, which is 12.9. And I check the resistance between the other two pins. which is closing, this one is 16.3. So obviously, if any of these two coins uh, is faulty, you will have a really high reading or low reading. So if you get low reading, very low reading, something close to zero, it means that coil is already shorted. If you are getting a really high value, it means coil is open. We can activate the actuator as well. Again, in the wind diagram, you remember pin number two is the battery positive. All right, so if you provide the battery positive to pin number two, and then it comes to uh, the control line. So battery positive is provided to pin number two. I'm gonna do it right now. If you provide battery positive pin number two, and then if you give the ground to pin number one, you will activate the actuator to open it. And if you give the ground to pin number three, you will activate the actuator to close it. So here is my tool to activate the actuator without causing any fault on it, just nine volt battery. There is a switch in here that I can activate. Okay, if you look inside the chamber, I have the gate down there. I hope you guys can see that. When I actuate it, it's already open and it's closed. One more time, it's open. You can say it's already open and it's already closed. So, So this is how we can actuate the actuator itself. When you remove the actuator, just as you see, this one is not that much clean. All this dirt, it can cause the actuator a failure. So when you remove it, you're gonna need to give a good clean to the actuator as well, because many times your actuator is not actually faulty. You do all the inspection I just explained, but you see everything is okay. So uh, cleaning the actuator is really, really, a good idea before uh, replacing it. So for my case, problem was actually from the connector. Connected case is broken, so it doesn't hold the connector in place. That's why it comes loose all the time. So, so I need to replace the connector case with a brand new one. But you already know how uh, to inspect the idle control valve uh, for any of those problems, for checking the wiring, for checking the a valve itself or for uh, cleaning or actuating the valve i hope you guys find the video helpful thank you very much for watching and please don't forget to uh, visit the channel for more diagnostic videos thank you